There are three ways to do buttonholes on this machine. First off, when you first get your machine, your buttonhole foot, the automatic one, is actually sitting in your accessory box all by itself. It doesn't come in the bag. So look for this. The second foot you have is the C foot. This would be for making longer buttonholes than this foot will allow you to use. Then we're gonna show you how to do corded buttonholes. So three different kinds coming up. So first off, we're gonna do the automatic one. When you have this foot, we're gonna look for the bar. This bar is actually gonna be in the front part and the whole entire foot's gonna stick out the back side. When you hold it just right and push against this lever on the left side, it's gonna open up a little area back here. That is actually where you put the button. Ha, genius. So when you put your button here, then the machine will know how big a buttonhole to do to accommodate this size of button. All right, so we're gonna switch over. Just take your regular foot off. Sometimes what I'll do is push up on my presser foot lifter and then that kind of helps it get in to that area. And then this thread that's gonna sit kind of off to the side over the top of the foot, just leave it out there. We'll kind of hold it while we start. We don't have to do anything with it. You're gonna set up your width all the way to five. To get to your buttonhole stitch, you're gonna to go to the right of one. That's right over here. You've got two parts that we're gonna use, but first start where the picture of the buttonhole is. And then for stitch length, we're also gonna go all the way down to between zero and one. And then our stitch, our tension. If you adjust it down to two, that will make a prettier satin stitch as we do our stitching. Okay, so the first time we stitch, we're gonna always test it out anyway. Keeping in mind that your machine is gonna start here and stitch away from us. So start near an edge, lower down the presser foot, and there's one more thing we need to set. Back behind your needle threader, back here, there isn't another paddle you're gonna pull down out from kind of the inside of the machine and pull it straight down. This is the reference point the foot is looking for to tell the machine when to turn around based on the size of button that's in the back of the foot. Okay, you ready to see it? We're, as we stitch, the machine will go ahead and start with a tack at the bottom, and then it will go ahead and stitch all the way back here. It will turn around once that lever touches the back of the buttonhole, and then it'll turn all the way forward. And as it stitches all the way down, what you're gonna watch for, okay, so being a mechanical machine, it doesn't know where it's actually started from. So you are gonna watch till it gets all the way back around to its first starting point. Stop when it gets there, lift up the presser foot, pull it out, that's where that little thread's gonna come on down, and then you have your first buttonhole. Now people say, oh, well, I don't use buttonholes very much. I don't do any garments. But these days, you are seeing buttonholes showing up in lots of places, from home deck areas to the, like shower curtains. You know, something that you wanna do some decorative a header up there. All you need to do is some buttonholes across the top and those little rings from your shower curtain will fit right through it. We're seeing them where you sew a row of buttonholes and weave ribbon through them. What a fun decoration to go. Now, once you've done one buttonhole, you wanna reset it. That's what this little dark area with the little kind of turned around arrow, listen for the click. Very distinct and then turn it back to the buttonhole setting. That way, now the machine knows to start again. And then you can just go ahead, put it back in again and do buttonhole number two, three, four, and keep on going. Now, next we're gonna talk about how we do a buttonhole with the other buttonhole foot, the metal one that came with your machine. It's letter C. Now this one you actually have to mark your starts and stops because then you know when to actually turn it around. Remember, we're starting on the front marked area. And once again, the lever does need to be down. You will actually be touching the lever when we sew back to that previous line there. Okay, so we've reset it. You heard the click. Now it knows that we want a tack at the bottom. And then it'll stitch back. Watching for the line right inside that foot area where I marked it. There it is. Stop sewing. Take the lever and we're gonna tap it towards us. That would be like the machine seeing where that button was in the previous foot. Now it knows to do the tack and then to go ahead and sew down on the right side of the buttonhole. Once again, stop when you get back to the beginning and lift it out and now you have your next buttonhole. Remember to reset it each time you do one. Let's go ahead and talk about a corded buttonhole. On the lever, or let's see here, I'm gonna take this foot off. 
You see that in the back, there's this little extra nub sticking out and it's the same place on this one. There's one back here also. And when we take our thread, we can, the cord, a corded buttonhole is done with, so that the, there's a little support system inside there. As you wrap it around the back side, see how those, that cord runs parallel down the underneath part of the foot. There's a little part up front that these threads can come up in and be held while you're doing a corded buttonhole. We're gonna actually do it on this foot, show you how that actually works. So it actually stabilizes the buttonhole a little bit better. So we'll go ahead and kind of get it set up and then put the cord in last. So I'm kind of coming underneath, I'm hooking it around that back part. So let's go this way, two hands hook it over and then bring it underneath. There we go. And then once we go ahead and set it down, that will kind of help hold it to guide it. I think we reset it, we'll just be sure. Yep, no big th loud click. And now we're ready to stitch. Okay, now it's ready to stitch. That cord's really gonna kind of be guided by the foot because there's little channels underneath it. Remember, get where you need to be, take the lever, tap it towards you when you want it to turn around, and then it'll come down the other side of the cord. Let me get this little thread out of the way. There we go. Okay. Stop when you get to the end, reset it. I always do that right away so I don't forget for later. And now let's take a look at what we do next. We're gonna take, I'm gonna cut these threads away so you don't see them. Get that out of our way. Okay. So you see this little cord here that's coming up. That was the loop from above the foot or behind it. And we're just gonna go ahead and give a pull on that cord and that little loop is gonna disappear. Then we can take our scissors and trim really close to the end there. And if you give it a little tug, those little ends will actually disappear. Now for cutting a buttonhole open, there is a buttonhole cutter. It consists of a little block of wood you put behind your buttonhole and then a chisel that you just Slice perfectly right down the middle. I always like to put a little fray check on the buttonholes before I open it. A little fray check down the middle, let dry for about five minutes and then cut them open. And those edges are perfectly sealed and never have to worry about fraying out. So that's how you do buttonholes. And we'll also show you how to sew buttons on as well.